Good morning, I'm Alan, and this is our 9 a.m. online Bible study, and we're going through the book of Colossians, and I'm glad that you're joining us. I hope that you're following along with your Bible or a Kindle reader or an app on your phone or tablet. And today we're looking at Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 23, which is all about God being pleased, and Paul's going to explain to us in this chapter why God was pleased. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for, for God being on our side, his love, his mercy, and his grace, and we thank you for it, and we ask all things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here. Uh, we begin in verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. The attention now shifts in Colossians from the, the world of creation to Jesus Christ's relationship with his church and his lordship in reconciliation, in other words, or restoration of all things. Elsewhere in Paul's letters, he uses the church, he calls it the body, the body of believers, to refer to this, this relationship that we have with God and the duties that church members have in relationship to the things we have with God Almighty. And so Paul is saying, even as the Colossians go about the daily things they do, he reminds them that all Christians are members of this gathering in heaven. We have this presence here on earth in church, but because we are part of the relationship with Jesus, we are also have a part in heaven. And that's because of the fellowship that we have with him. Jesus Christ is the beginning in the sense that he is the firstborn among the dead. In other words, being born again, that's why Christianity says you must be born again, because you become a new creation, a new human. And we'll see more of that as we go on into Colossians. Verse 20, and through him to reconcile, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. That's a, a, an interesting term, reconcile to himself all things. It doesn't mean that Jesus Christ by his death on the cross has saved all people. All people can be saved because he died on the cross, but it doesn't automatically guarantee that all people are saved. See, the Bible talks about a, an eternal hell, a place of punishment, and it makes it clear that only believers are the ones who will be saved from that punishment. When Adam and Eve sinned, not only was the, the harmony, the relationship between God and human beings destroyed, but disorder, sin, came into creation. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he made peace possible between God and humans. And he restored in principle the, the, the harmony, the cohesiveness, the original tent of what God created in the physical world, though it won't be fully realized until Jesus Christ returns for the second time. And we're, we're studying that in the morning worship. We're studying Revelation, and we're getting into parts where, where we'll explain that. And so if you haven't had a chance to watch or haven't been watching, it would be a good time to, to take some time and watch that as well. Verse 21, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Verse 20, verse 20 talks about us being reconciled. Well, reconciliation is the act by which God, through Jesus 
atonement brings sinners into a peaceful and proper relationship with God, as it was in the original Garden of Eden before sin entered it. And so Paul is reminding the, the Colossians that reconciliation is already an accomplished fact. Before their conversion, the Colossians had been Gentile sinners, or sinners, alienated from God and enemies of his in their minds because of their wicked works or because of their sin. Verse 22, but now he, Jesus, has reconciled you by God his physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. See, we we were born sinners and we sin and we make mistakes. I mean, just look around us and all the evil, all the sickness, all the problems. But the good news is, is because of Jesus, when Jesus when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. He sees the work that he accomplished. He does not see our sin, and that's a good thing. Also, the important thing in our Christian lives is not how we look in our own sight. It's how we look in God's sight. And because of Jesus, it's different for us. It's amazing that God looks at us his children, and sees us as holy and blameless, above reproach. God chose us to be without blame before him in love. Now, people may have accusations to bring against us, but they cannot change our relationship with God because it was changed because of Jesus on the cross. In other words, as it says in verse 22, he reconciled them in the body of his flesh through death or through the physical body. It was not his life that did it. It was his death. And so the Lord Jesus caused us to have reconciliation by dying on the cross in a real human body, not as a spirit being as Gnostics were trying to say, they said Jesus was spirit only, but Paul makes it very clear that Jesus Christ was both fully human and fully God. Verse 23, if you, if you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard and has been proclaimed to every creature unto heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. And that's what Paul's goal was. He was a servant of the people. I'm sorry, a servant to the people, a servant of Jesus Christ, explaining what Jesus had done for sinners, us, and how that can make a difference if we reach out in faith and hope. This passage can be uncomfortable for some believers. There's there's two major schools of thought. There's there's the the Reformed and the Wesleyan approach. And the Reformed belief says that if someone walks away, that they were never truly saved. They were never truly a Christian. The Wesleyan position says that they chose to walk away. Either way, whichever school of thought you belong to, Wesleyan or Reformed, the person has made a decision in their mind to walk away from Jesus. But the good news is, if we continue in our faith, if we continue to practice our faith, we will continue in salvation. Now, over in John's Gospel, it says, no sheep of Jesus will ever perish. And the Bible makes it very clear that the eternal security of the believer is a truth which is shown very clearly in the New Testament. In other words, nobody can come along and, and take us or snatch us out of the hand of Jesus. The Bible makes that very clear. But again, some people choose to walk away and they suffer the consequences. But that's a choice. 
but Satan or somebody else is not going to come and grab you from Jesus because Jesus guarantees us by the Holy Spirit that we will have a place in heaven. But it comes through true faith. See, faith has to be permanent. And the one who is really born of God will go and serve faithfully to the end. And if we continue in the Christian life, that is the proof of the reality of our faith and belief. Now, there's always the danger of backsliding or walking away. But a Christian falls to rise again. Yes, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we, we backslide or we move away from Jesus. But if we get back up and continue in faith, if we don't reject it, we will have a place with Jesus. And then Paul says, every creature, every creature under heaven. And Paul insists that the Christian faith is not something that's local. It's not something that's regional, but it's worldwide. And we know that there are Christians all over the world. And so when he says, if you continue in your faith, he's talking about perseverance. Perseverance helps to re reveal the authenticity of our faith in Jesus. Now, Paul was concerned about false teachers. And we see that in, it, in, his, in this passage, the gospel that you heard. It's easy to get tricked. It's easy to wander off the narrow path, to get lost in the woods. And these false teachers did not agree with Paul on the point of Christian doctrine. And what they did is they, they weakened or destroyed the faith of many. And Paul was very concerned that their teaching would lead some of the Colossians to move away from the hope of the gospel. And, and we hear that today. It's very easy to look at Christians. It's very easy to look at religious leaders who tell us to do what they say, but yet do something the opposite. But what Paul's saying, because of belief, because of faith, because of Jesus and his mercy and grace, we can and do have a new life. All we need to do is continue in faith and belief. Amen. I hope you come and worship with us here in Paris at 10, 10 a.m. If you can't, watch us live, Facebook, YouTube. Don't forget, we are studying Revelation this Sunday that tells the battle of Satan and the Archangel Michael. It's going to be a good message. I hope you don't miss it. Have a great Sunday.